Hello again everyone, Edwin Learned back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be dissertating and talking about Sandra Bland's natal chart. Now, I don't have her time of birth, but I managed to find her date of birth and I'm going to improvise and I'm going to do what many of you may heard of. It's called a solar chart and I'm going to put the ascendant at the same position as the sun sign or very close to it. And I'm going to base the chart using using that time, which puts the sun and ascendant at the same degree. Now, in her chart, what I've uh, what I've noticed is she has the sun in Aquarius, which is not a big shock, or I'm not exactly flabbergasted by that. She's had probably had a little bit of the rebel in her, maybe a little bit of a radical, a maverick, uh, someone that's very strong. Uh, in her convictions and her beliefs. And Aquarius people often will do things that maybe the, the average person might be a little leery or reluctant uh, to do. That man that, uh, I forget his name, that became the first person to walk across the Grand Canyon on a tightrope without any netting uh, underneath him or any protection, uh, I believe had his son in Aquarius. She also had uh, the moon in Gemini, and moon in Gemini uh, can obviously, they could be very versatile. She seemed to have a voluble tongue, so to speak, and be able to uh, very, she seemed, uh, the impression I got, very loquacious and probably can be talkative. And I, I saw this, I mean, that was just in the police footage, of course, and when she had been uh, when she had been apprehended and when I look at this um, her chart it has uh, a lot of planets in the in the fourth quadrant and a lot of what she did was connected I guess with human rights a humanitarian uh, type things I believe she was a human rights advocate if I'm not mistaken and which is uh, having the sun sign Aquarius is no uh, no shocker uh, for this. Uh, she had like I believe if I remember correctly over forty thousand likes on her Facebook page page, so she was fairly prominent in that in, in that regard, I guess. And what's interesting uh, with her chart uh, too, okay. Another thing about her chart is that she has her uh, her final uh, chart signature in Sagittarius and Sagittarius is not one to hold back and they will it's even though uh, I don't think it supersedes the Sun Moon or Ascendant at the same time I would say uh, that it still could be fairly prominent and it's supposed to give an overall like flavor or tone to the chart and which indicates that philosophy uh, expansion things connected uh, with the higher mind probably were, were strong with her and obviously very vocal about speaking her mind as well and what was interesting uh, on this day is that uh, first I want to say before I'm going to get to transits she has majority preponderance of planets on the left side of her chart in the solar chart I drew up and which shows somebody that could be very exceptionally independent and someone that does not really ha has an aversion maybe of being told what to do and in this particular case it may have come out very strongly sadly in this incident and uh, some other things uh, to look at now her chart ruler in the solar chart is in her 11th house so things connected with humanitarianism groups, organizations, her hopes or dreams were probably uh, came up very strongly in her her uh, personality as far as having uh, Aquarius on the first house cusp in the solar chart would come out very strongly uh, in these areas. Now in her solar chart the moon in Gemini is in the fourth house so it can take on a little bit of an emotional uh, cancer type uh, feeling uh, as far as this goes. She has a balance, uh, I'm looking right now, uh, 
She has six of the planets on the top half of her chart in the solar chart and four on the bottom, which emphasize a little, emphasize a little bit more extroversion and gregarious, as, being a gregarious as opposed to introversion and, and privacy. It shows probably a little more uh, being more objective than subjective, more optimistic than pessimistic. Uh, some other things uh, to look at. I wanted to look at uh, what I thought was interesting is, is the transits and but before I get to that though she had said that she had epilepsy in the police video footage now what I thought was interesting is that her moon is in Gemini according to this uh, solar chart and I think would have been no it would have been in Gemini I believe regardless of time and date so I think that that's pretty definitive her moon being in Gemini now, Gemini, many of you may know, it governs the central nervous system. Now, I'm not saying everybody with the moon in Gemini could have this problem, but keep in mind in her solar chart that uh, her sixth house cusp is Cancer, and the moon is the ruling planet of this, so that ruling planet is the sixth uh, house ruler of health. Now, it also, the moon in Gemini squares Mercury, in this case, Mercury in Pisces. Mercury connected with thinking communication. Mercury in this solar chart is intercepted in the first house. It's also in its detriment by sign. So there are some of these things to consider also in this solar chart that the moon in Gemini is involved in a mutable T-square configuration involving the Moon, Mercury, and the MC in Sagittarius. So uh, what I would think possibly is if something ever hits like Virgo and, and makes in, in a Virgo degree which would actually um, by, by, as, by transiting aspect would create like I guess you could say a mutable Grand Cross that could be something which I think could could possibly trigger something like this. I don't, there wasn't anything on this day that actually did that, but at the same time, I, that that's just a theory I have. Now, there are really, I mean, on this day, sadly, she had, okay, the moon had transited her third house on this day, and she, obviously she became, uh, she communi was communicating in a very emotional manner at this time transiting Neptune was squaring her natal moon very close tight square as well which could cause some chaos with the emotions as well at this time. Another thing that I thought was interesting was that um, was that transiting uh, Uranus was making a close conjunction to her natal Mars and Aries and this could set off the unpredictable, uh, perhaps uh, acrimonious or angry behavior. Now, I think another thing what is, um, what is interesting as well is that transiting Chiron was making a conjunction to her natal Jupiter. Now, in her solar chart, Sagittarius is on the midheaven or MC. The 10th house cusp is about authority figures and interestingly enough Chiron hit that 10th house ruler which is connected with authority figures on this day so it can show some wounds perhaps even physical that may have transpired because of this now I got her birth date from uh, it was on the latimes.com and it had some booking information in case anybody was wondering where I pulled this out of I didn't pull a rabbit out of a head I know it may seem like I did but that's not actually what happened I just did some research and I managed to get the birth date by this I don't know her time of birth I just know that her birth date is February 7th 1987 and she was born in Chicago Illinois and really that that's pretty much about what I wanted to get on this also the what's interesting is that her third house cusp is Taurus on the solar chart and that ruler hits uh, Neptune in this case and Neptune is about 
chaos and confusion. So it could show that maybe sometimes her thinking might be a little bit nebulous and also having Mercury in Pisces doesn't help these matters. Another thing too, what's interesting is that the, the 12th house cusp. Now I understand epilepsy, I believe has been recently, has been not, is, is diagnosed as something that's not a mental uh, disorder. But what I found interesting at the same time is that on the cusp of her 12th house is Capricorn. Now it could show that maybe in her solar chart, it could show someone that shows despondency, perhaps in seclusion. And it could also, um, what I looked at I thought was interesting is that the ruler of Capricorn, okay, Saturn, conjoins her Uranus. And Uranus is a planet of unpredictability and can erratic and sporadic things. And it could show that maybe maybe something in her private life may have been going like this, and, or maybe there is some kind of I don't I don't know if she had anything else in addition to the epilepsy, but maybe there there's something in there that might be connected with some chaos. Maybe it maybe at least in her private life. I, I'm not I don't know like I said though I don't know if she had any um any emotional actually uh, true classifications of emotional disorders though. Now uh, one last thing I thought was intriguing was that transiting Pluto was making a conjunction to her solar twelfth house at the time and now the 12th house is about imprisonment and incarceration, and Pluto is the planet associated with death. So I thought it was interesting that she died in prison and having uh, this transit her, hit her solar chart. Well, anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube uh, astrological segment for the Sandra Bland uh, natal chart, which is actually the solar chart. And stay tuned next time, where I'll be continuing my series on... Uh, on the astrological uh, signs on the house cusps. Two things I want to get with you on before I head out. Firstly, the stars may impel but do not compel. And secondly, never isolate in a single astrological element, aspect, planetary placement, position, configuration, influence, or what have you, and make an analysis of a person, astrologically speaking, based on this alone. Because astrologically speaking, the person is the sum of all their components in their natal chart, and not just one. Until next time, people, stay well.